Hi guys, my name is Peter Walters. I'm the director and senior producer at Blue Artists. Um, you know, one of one of the most important things that we try to try to strive for in every project that we do with Blue Artists is is we want to look for that special element that inspires people, that special nugget, you know, that just that just really inspires people to get up, get motivated, and do something. Um, our mission statement is that, is that we want to we want to tell incredible stories. We want to work with incredible people to tell amazing stories that inspire audiences, that inspire brands, that that empower them to get up, get motivated, and get out there. Uh, you know that's a great thing if you're a business. You want your you want your uh, customers to be motivated about everything that you do. If you are a musician, you want your listeners to be excited about your music and and catch the vision of of each of, of each of each song that you create. Um, and you know if you're a if you're a, 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 a owner of a brand or, or or anything like that, you know the whole point is that you want to motivate those that you serve motivate them, inspire them to get up, get out there, and do. Because really that's what it's all about. It's about doing. Um, nonetheless, you know, one of, my, one of my really favorite motivational speakers, his name is Les Brown, and uh, many of you probably know who he is, but for my generation, uh, you know, I'm, I'm born in 85, my generation, I don't, I don't know if many of us even listen to motivational speakers, let alone know who Les Brown is. But, um, I, I want to point out something he says that's very, very powerful. And, and he says, you know, if life, if life knocks you down, try to land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. Why, why is that powerful? Well, I think uh, many of us have had uh, times in our lives when, when life has just kind of just hit you with a one-two punch, you know? Just, it just got you. And, uh, and, 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 you, and you feel like, you know, what else is there for me to do? I'm stuck. I'm, I'm trapped at this dead-end job. I, I, you know, I'm not doing something that I love. I know there's greatness in me, but you know what? I cannot seem to figure how to let it out or, or what I need to do to even tap into it. Well, I want to tell you a little story about uh, something that happened to me just a little over a year ago. Um, in 2011... I, uh, around this time, uh, in mid, mid to late July, I had just finished wrapping a full-length feature film. And uh, this film, I mean, was a, was a grueling shoot. We had so many actors. We shot in one studio for the entire picture. Uh, and, and one of the worst things about the whole thing, I mean, we're working 16-hour days every single day. And one of the worst things about this thing was that there was no air conditioning in the uh, facility that we were working in and so we were I mean we were sweating we were pe people I, I think people thought they were going to die of heat stroke um, well throughout that entire shoot I had been having pains in my sort of my neck area my my upper back area um, and I had been having these pains for quite some time but I mean they really started to intensify during this shoot and I thought it was because of the heat and, and, and all of that or you know the stress but, you know, it, it, it got to a point where I started developing sort of tingling sensations in my arms and in my legs. And, uh, I mean, it got so bad that one day I, I woke up, I literally woke up, and I could not move. I could not move. Um, I, I lay there in bed, scared out of my mind. And within, within some time, after I had woke, awakened, after I was awake, uh, within some time I, I slowly began to develop sensation again in my arms and in my legs, and so I, eventually I was able to get up and, and go about my day. But that moment scared the living daylights out of me. Um, later on, just a few days after the film had been complete, just a few days, I was at a photo shoot for uh, my producer friend, Miles Franklin, for his wine label. And uh, at that photo shoot, I, I had, I had just, I began to feel like I was going to collapse, like, like the, the pain in my legs and in my arms was just so intense that I was going to collapse. And terrified out of my mind, I called my mother, who lived nearby, and I said, "Mom, I think I'm going to be." need to go to the hospital because 
I don't know what's going on with me. Now, here's the thing. I had been to the hospital probably three or four times within the last two months leading up to this time. So, and each time I went there, they told me, oh, you know, you just have stress or, you know, you just have a tightness in your back. It's okay. You, you just need to take some of this, take a, a steroid shot or some cream on your back or whatever, and that's going to let it subside and go away. No, not the case. I was back at the hospital. I was in the emergency room. I was, I was taken into the back, laid on a bed. They, they, they rolled me over into the fetal position. They, they, they took this huge needle. I mean, this ginormous needle. And they plugged it right into my spinal cord in my lower back. And they began to extract spinal fluid. I was terrified. I was in pain. I was having these strange tingling sensations on my arms and my legs. And I, 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 I didn't know what was happening to me. You know, and this was interesting because this was a time in my life when things were going great. I mean, I was on my a third full-length feature film. I had an incredibly, I had recently uh, 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 signed a contract for a year-long uh, television show. I was just, I felt like I was, wow, you know, life is finally turning around for me. But you know what? When I was in that fetal position with that uh, sp uh, spinal, uh, with that uh, needle in my spinal cord uh, extracting fluid, I, I was, I was, I thought, I didn't know what was going to happen. Well, they took the fluid they analyzed it. They told me they still couldn't figure out what was wrong. So then they kept me overnight. They kept me overnight for two whole days before the uh, MRI uh, technicians could figure out what, what was happening to me. So here's what happened. I had developed a severe hernia, basically, where the, uh, I don't remember which discs it was, but there were two discs in my, in my cervical spine area that were protruding. And this is probably because the doctor says at one point I probably lifted something a little too heavy that I probably shouldn't have lifted. And it's true because I remember a few years ago I went out and purchased a beautiful plasma television and I took it home all by myself and mounted it onto a thingy on the wall all by myself. And I thought I was just the most, I, you know, I thought I was the shit. But you know what happened? I felt a little pop in my back. And I think that's probably what caused it. And that was, that was probably a whole year leading up to this event. So, I mean, it's just amazing how things compound. But anyway, um, those, two cervical, those two discs in my cervical spine were, were protruding and pushing against my spinal cord. They were pushing against it, both of them, to the, to the point where it was preventing the electrical signals uh, from my brain to, go, to travel down the spinal cord and into my limbs. So, so I was, I was going paralyzed. I was go going paralyzed. In fact, the very next day after they delivered the results and they told me it was going, the very next day I was rushed from Washington Adventist Hospital to Baltimore Shock Trauma, where they, where they prepped me, and within a few hours I was on the operating room, uh, operating room table. The, uh, the surgeon held my hand and he said, "Son, you know." The, your condition I, is not, I have never seen the amount of protruding going on in your neck and, at someone your age. What you are going through is something people usually begin to develop in their, late, in their mid to late 70s. So, you know, whatever you did was very bad. And quite frankly, uh, we're going to do the best that we can, but there is a possibility that you are not going to make it out of this situation with the use of your limbs. You may very well be paralyzed. And they gave me a piece of paper to sign. And this was a consent form. Whether or not I wanted to, you know, be revived, uh, in the event of a situation in, in, in the actual surgery. You know what I did? I said no. No. If I, if, if I don't make it through this surgery, uh, if I don't make it through this, this surgery with the use of my full body, I don't, I don't even want to be re revived.
now looking back at it, I, I believe that was an incredibly selfish thing for me to do. And I'm thankful to God that that is not the path that my life took. But for that moment, in that split second, in the time that I had to make that decision, I was scared. All I ever know, all I have ever known, that the only thing that I, that I have truly dedicated my life to, I would not be able to do if I survived without the use of my body. That wasn't a life I wanted to live, let alone imagine. Well, the surgery was very long, and I'm using my hands, so as you can see, I survived. They fixed the problem. They, they, put, they popped those discs back into place, screwed them in so they don't come back out. They even put a, a metal rod down my neck that, uh, that, that provides, I guess, stability or something. So consequently, I, I have limited neck movement, but it, it's okay. The point is... I am here, I am back. And you know what? When I was in the hospital, the hospital room recovering from this surgery, when I was lying on my back, not sure what was going to happen to me, when I was, when I was at, to me, the, the dead end, all I could do was look up. All I could do was look up. And God said to me, I'm not finished with. I'm not finished with you. I've got a plan for you. Just like Les Brown says, if life, if life knocks you down, land on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. And that's what I did. Within days, I was learning to walk again. I, I had a walk, a, a walking, a crutch thing, a walking thing that old people use. I had that. I had two of them. But here I am, and I, have a, and I have a refreshed outlook on life. It's almost been a year now since that time in my life. And I have rededicated myself, no, not, not to filmmaking, not to directing, not to things that are useless, but, but, but to, to the greater ideal, to the greater vision, to this idea of inspiring and motivating people. To, to pushing people to achieving what they thought that they couldn't. Because you know what? Life is short, people. Life is short. You can be on the top of your game. You could be ambitious. You could be on the way that you think God has planned for you. The way you, you might have that degree. You might have that, uh, that, that wonderful, cushy job. You might have that incredible paycheck. But you know what? Any one of us could be, in an instant, not on our back without the use of our arms and without the use of our legs and forced to just lay there and die. If we don't develop the inner motivation to realize what is really important here. And what's important is developing this passion. It's, de it's about developing a passion for life. Not just your life, but for other people's lives. Pushing people. And that's what I want to tell you. I want to tell you, if you're at a point in your life where, where you have hit something, and you, you have hit what you think is rock bottom, and, and, and you are lying on your back, I want to let you know that if you can look up, you can get up. I, yesterday, today, yesterday, I just finished another commercial. I just finished directing another commercial. It was an incredible experience, an intense experience. And you know what? That's not even my main objective in life anymore. But I, but I did it yesterday. What, what's important to me now is living a life that is full and complete. Living a life that if I were to lay on my back again, faced with death again at any, at any random time, that I could say, you know what, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I don't... I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm ready to die. Or I'm not saying I am... I am uh, giving up on life. And I'm not saying, no, don't revive me if I don't have my arms and legs. No, what I am saying is that if I was in that same situation now today, I would be satisfied. Because, because, now I'm, because what I want to do in life, I can accomplish with nothing more than just my brain. And that is inspiring inspiring you. If you're an actor, if you're an up-and-coming producer, if you, want, if you want to direct, if you want to write, 
whatever it is that you want to do, and if you feel like, you know, life is just not throwing you that bone that you think you should be getting, I mean, if you feel that you were just, that it's just, things are just not going the way, just, look, you, if you can walk, if you can move around, all right, you're already doing better than most people. If life knocks you down on your back, if you can look up, you can get up, right? I just want I just wanted to convey that to you guys because um life is short. There's a lot that you can do, and you know most people fail in life not because they aim too high and miss. They fail because they aim too low and hit. Aim high. That way, you're always looking up.